and welcome to the Bees and Yarn podcast. My name is Orly. Um, it's been a little while. <laughs> I don't think I have filmed or uploaded a podcast episode since like September, maybe? Um, and it's December, so it's it's been a bit of <laughs> a longer break than I'd thought. Um, for my returning viewers, you'll have A, recognised the break, but also recognise that I'm filming in a bit of a different location. Um, I'm just in our living room and I've managed to get the camera to only show you a very small area. Um, it's a very small space, so I'm just sort of on the corner of our couch in an attempt to have a bit more space for me to have things around me. Um, it's quite a small little part of my room that I used to film in. Um, the main reason that I didn't start filming out here originally was because with my family at home, then it would just have too much noise because there's no door to close um, in the living room. So everyone happens to be out today. My sister's working um, and both my parents are out of the house. My dad's working in the office like normal and mum happened to go into work. She had like a Christmas party today with her team. So um, the house ended up quiet. I have finished high school. Um, that happened two days ago, I think, um, on Tuesday the 8th. So graduated from year 10 because I, where I live, oh, I live in Australia. I don't think I mentioned that. Um, I'm a bit out of practice with the intro. So if you're new, you'll have to forgive me that I'm a little bit all over the place. Um, but yeah, I graduated year 10 and because the public school that I go to here in the ACT, um, it only goes to year 10 and then we go to a separate school for year 11 and 12, which we call college. Um, that might be similar for some of you watching and it might be different. I know in the US you sometimes get confused between what we call college and what we call university and um, a lot of the private schools in the ACT do go all the way to year 12. Um, it's not a thing that is the same throughout Australia, it's just sort of state-based. Um, but yeah, that was on Tuesday morning and then we had our formal in the evenings. That was really awesome that we could still do that um, fairly as planned. It didn't really have to have a lot of changes. Um, and then, yeah, that was just a really fun evening um, slash morning. <laughs> I got home a bit after two, but... Um, yeah, so that was really great to be able to see people and then, um, yeah, just chat to people, some of whom you've known for like four years and then something you've only come to know recently that I guess that's just what happens with such a big cohort though. Um, when there's 250 odd people, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to get to know everyone. So yeah, that's sort of what's been happening, uh, in my life. The main reason that I did take such a long break was because, um, so I used to film every other week, so every second week, and if I was following that, my last time that I was meant to be filming was the last day of school holidays, um, of our September, October holidays. And I just didn't film like, feel like filming that day because we were about to go into the last term and yeah, I just sort of wanted the day to be a bit quiet, um, knowing that the term was going to be quite busy. Um, and then the term was really, really busy. <laughs> Um, because we finished early, so year 10s finished um, about two weeks early from the rest of the school. Every like assessment piece had to be done earlier, um, just everything was really sped through. Any kind of spare time I would get, I just didn't feel like sitting down and filming knowing that I then had to edit and make a thumbnail and do the show notes and then upload it um, because free time was so scarce that I just wanted to sit and just read a book or um, do some knitting when I did have free time. I also had just a bunch of health things sort of get drastically worse about two months ago. Um, so it's, I've just had lots of appointments seeing um, specialists and doctors and things. So um, yeah, I'm fine, but we're still sort of trying to work out what's going on. So that's just been a bit of an extra stress because I've missed, I missed quite a lot of school because of that. And so then trying to catch up on content and then needing extensions for my assignments and just 
yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit all over the place over term. So I, yeah, the, the term went by and then I realized I hadn't uploaded a video in a really long time. Um, I have still been posting on my Instagram. So if you follow me over there at Bees and Yarn, I've still been posting every couple of days to show what I've been working on. Um, and yeah, just try to stay in touch that way. But that's quite a lot easier for me to take a couple of photos and then go through them in the evening when I'm just sitting after dinner and write a caption and then share it. So that's quite a lot less of a time commitment than a whole podcast, but I do really miss it. So I sort of just spontaneously had a few extra spare hours today um, and the house was empty. So I thought I would film and I have no clue how long this is going to be. My episodes used to be around 40 minutes, but um, it sort of varies. Um, obviously there's quite a lot of projects that I've made and finished since my last podcast episode. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, predominantly because I don't actually remember them all. Um, some of them were gifts or samples for my work. Um, I work at a yarn store, if you're new, and yeah, um, I usually just refer to it as my work, but I realise that doesn't, that's not very clear if you don't have context. Um, but I make samples for the shop using yarns that we sell and then they go on display. Um, some of them will be for sale and some of them are just for people to look at. Um, but yeah, I've finished, finished so many things <laughs> since then. Somehow I still had a lot of time uh, here and there to just chip away at some projects, but obviously we'd be here for a really long time, even if I could remember a lot of the things that I've made since then. I mean, to be honest, before when I was filming every other week, I wouldn't even remember what I showed you two weeks ago, started and finished it between the last episode. Uh, yeah, apparently my memory's not that great. So anyway, that was a bit of a ramble, but I felt like it was sort of necessary. Um, I feel like I meant to say more things. Oh yeah, I've already done the Instagram thing. That will be linked in the description. Um, along with any other things that I think you might want to know about. So I usually will write out the yarns and the patterns I've talked about so that you can click onto them if you are interested. But I think that's about everything I normally say in the intro. I really don't remember. But I think I'll just get into what I've been working on lately, like my kind of, what I consider my active projects. Um, so that, yeah, this isn't just me trying to remember what I say in a podcast and how to film a podcast. So, yeah, um, let's just start talking about projects so I don't look like I don't know what I'm doing. And if I think of things I was meant to say, they'll just kind of pop up sporadically throughout the video. I'm going to start with a new test knit that I started just a couple days ago, and this is for... Um, Rachel Ramo, who is Maven Crafted on, like that's her designs and she's that username on Instagram as well. Um, I don't know if this is like my fourth or fifth test knit for Rachel. I've done quite a few. She's just super lovely and I just love her designs. So um, it's just really fun being able to test for her. And this is her first um, Tunisian crochet or just crochet in general pattern that she will be releasing. So that was super exciting to see because I finished a pretty monstrous, or it wasn't monstrous in that I didn't like it or the thing itself was a monstrosity. It was just monstrous in how long it took to do. But um, that test knit sort of just left me a bit, oh, I've pulled a stitch out, um, left me a bit mm, requiring, requiring a break from test knits because it was, it was only mildly stressful at the end. The, yeah, anyway. Um, Basically, I knit one of the sleeves on the wrong needle size and then had to redo the entire sleeve and yeah. Anyway, the reason that I then applied for this, even though I had told myself I was going to take a break from test knitting, was because it was a crochet pattern. And I was originally, like, I started crocheting first before knitting. And so it's not that I'm more confident or comfortable with it. It's just, no, no, I am more comfortable with it. <laughs> yeah, I think it just... It feels a little less, I don't know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's faster. I think that's what I'm trying to say. It's faster and I just, 
really know what I'm doing because I have been doing it longer. So this is the Sin Illusion scarf and cowl. So let me bring up the photo. She, um, Rachel did her sample in quite a dark yarn, so I'm not sure um, how well this photo will show up, but she has some really beautiful ones on um, her Instagram when she put out the testing call. But it's the same or very similar pattern to her Sinner um, patterns. So there's the Sinner Bar sweater, which I'm actually working on, so I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and she's got some uh, baby jumpers, there's a cardigan. It's a really beautiful design that she's done in multiple different patterns. And this is the um, crocheted version of it. And so that's why it's the Sin, Illu Sin Illusion. It's a bit of a tongue twister because it sort of gives the illusion of the knitting pattern, but through crochet. So this is how mine is tracking. I'm using stash yarn for mine because I because it uses a worsted or a 10 ply weight yarn, I thought that I might be able to find some yarns in my stash to hold together um, and equal a thicker gauge. So these are the ones that I ended up with. Um, I don't know where the labels ended up. I think I only had a label for one or two of them. Yeah, so the hand dye yarn, um, well, technically all of these yarns I was given or gifted at one point or another, but this hand dyed yarn was sort of the star of the show that I really wanted to use for this. It's from the brand Misty Alpaca and it's their hand paint sock yarn fingering in HS75. That's the colour. Um, it's 50, 30, 10, 10. So alpaca, merino, silk and nylon. Um, so because of the silk and the nylon, I feel like it actually would work quite well for socks and it does have merino as well. Um, so if you wanted an alpaca yarn to use for socks, this kind of a base would be quite good. But um, I just felt like it was a bit busy to use on its own, at least in terms of what I would wear. And so then I went hunting through my stash and I discovered these two yarns. These are both lace weights. The one that's in a bit of a tangle. <laughs> um, this one is Filatura di Crossa Nirvana which is a 100% merino wool. And then this one is um, Sessia Imperial, which I'm pretty sure is a cashmere and silk blend, I wanna say. Um, it gives the effect of mohair, but a little bit more subdued, a little more sophisticated, and a bit less creating bits of fluff that stick to your face anytime you go near it. So. It's a bit pricey, but as far as a mohair alternative goes, it's quite lovely. Um, and so the two lace weights plus the four ply sock yarn um, gave me pretty much perfect gauge. It was it was yeah just crazy that it actually um, that it hit gauge so well. Um, but yeah, I was really happy that the two lace weight blue solid colors are sort of toning down the hand painted, so you still get. The beautiful variegation from the hand painted yarn but it's just a little bit more wearable at least for my personal style so um i've really been working on it for a little while but i'm making an infinity scarf version so i've got still quite a bit to go i'm a bit under halfway but it comes in a few different versions so i think people are doing either a scarf an infinity scarf or a cowl so yeah um i'm quite uh enjoying this and especially how fast it's working up it's quite an easy pattern to memorize and i haven't done tunisian crochet in quite a while so that was nice to bring back to um, an old skill that i learned ages ago and then just sort of didn't use all the time i think there's not as many patterns of tunisian crochet so um yeah i'm really excited about this one while we're on um rachel's patterns how about we talk about my cinnabar sweater so I've just got it on the couch next to me. So this is a pattern that I feel like it was the first in the Sinner collection that Rachel released. And I, I just adored the pictures when it was first released. Um, it comes in a few different versions. So the pattern has instructions to make it full length or cropped. You can do normal fitted sleeves or bell sleeves. 
um, you can have waist shaping or you can omit the waist shaping. Um, it's quite customizable. And this is also done in 10 ply or worsted weight yarn. So I felt like I just wanted some things to work up a bit faster um, amidst projects that were taking quite a long time. So um, let me grab the label. So I'm using Chaska Scarabeo, which is alpaca, wool and viscose. Um, and so it's 52% viscose, so quite a large well, over half of it is viscose, which is why I felt comfortable making an entire garment in a alpaca yarn. I think if it had a higher alpaca content, then I would probably want to hold it with something else just to give it some structure. Given how easily fibers like alpaca can stretch, I felt quite confident in this one being okay because it did have that viscose, um, which is a synthetic fiber and it doesn't stretch. So. This is how mine is going. Um, it looks a bit funny at the moment because I have done the yoke, so it's made top down. And I got down to separating for the sleeves just here, and then I did a tiny bit on the body. But then I realized that I hadn't actually bought enough yarn when I bought the yarn. This was like months and months ago, and I just only got to knitting it now. Um, I didn't buy the extra fourth skein because um, I don't know why. I just didn't. Um, oh, probably because the yarn was a bit more expensive than I thought. So I wanted to just get three and then put the fourth one aside at work. And if I needed it, I would buy it. But um, I checked and I, according to the pattern, I would need that fourth skein. But I was also going through the measurements of the pattern and comparing this one to another jumper that I have, a um, store-bought jumper. And I think I actually want mine quite a bit more cropped than her cropped version. So I'm what I decided to do was um, I've used one ball for the yoke and then I just started the second one in the body. And then I've used the third one to start doing this sleeve. And so I'll make the sleeves and I'll do both of them and then I'll come back to the body and I'll knit the body as long as I can with what yarn I have because obviously I want the sleeves to be a certain length, but the body I might be willing to um, adjust it in. So I'll just make the body as long as I can with what yarn I have left. And then if I do feel like I need another skein to make it that bit longer, then that's fine. And I have one aside at work, so um, I can buy that if I need to, but given I'll probably make mine a few inches shorter than the measurements, um, I'm hopeful that that will equate to me not needing that extra skein because I did only need, I think about a third of it I worked out. I'll show you a bit of a close up because this yarn, it really shows up best in natural sunlight. So once it's done, I'll take some photos of that, but it is basically this dark base um, and it shows up best on the pearl bumps. It has that viscose, undyed viscose running through it, or that's at least what I believe it is because um, the fibers will take the dye differently. So then you end up with this beautiful sheen factor to it. So because I was using a dark color for mine, I wanted the pattern to still stand out and this was just the perfect yarn for it. So I'm really excited about this. I am naturally doing the cropped version with bell sleeves because that's apparently just what I do. So yeah, I'm not planning to do waist shaping. I feel like I used to think I needed to always do waist shaping or that I'd like to do waist shaping on mine, um, which is just where you do decreases or if it's going bottom up, then you do um, increases to make the waist smaller than the bust. Um, but I feel like on my shape, I actually prefer a straight but cropped body. So um, I can just, do oh, no, I don't have a pattern, but I'm pretty sure I'm doing the third, maybe the second size. Yeah, I left the pattern in my room. I think it was the second size and it was meant to be a finished measurement of 40 inches at the bust. So I'll have about four inches of, yeah, positive ease um, and pattern recommended four to six. And so what I found is I like a slightly more fitted body, but for it to be a straight body so that it doesn't come in at the waist. I think if I were to do something with negative ease, then I would obviously want to do waist shaping, have it be fitted all the way along. But I find if it's a bit oversized at the bust, then I 
want it to still have that same oversized look at the waist. That's just sort of what I've found to be most flattering for me. And if there's ever an option to do big giant sleeves, I'm obviously gonna do the big giant sleeves. So yeah, I'm very excited with how this is going. Um, the sleeves are just smooth sailing now and because it's done in a thicker yarn, um, it's going a lot faster than a four ply garment would have. So I'm very excited about this and I'm hopeful that these two balls of yarn will get me both sleeves and the cropped body to the length that I want. At least that's the idea. And if it doesn't, well then at least I tried and I know that um, I made the body as long as I could with every bit of yarn that I had and that I just needed to buy an extra skein because it just wasn't enough, but at least I tried to make it work. I don't think I've really had any hiccups worth noting with this pattern. Um, I did start doing the increases, the raglan increases a bit wrong. I sort of got confused about where one of the markers was. Anyway, um, I basically, there's a marker. So you're beginning a round marker is in the middle of the back. And I got confused as to where each of the markers were. And I started doing increases in that one, but you didn't, you only want to do increases on the other one. So yeah, it has a bit of short row shaping in the back, but the pattern continues all the way across the whole body. But I was able to pick back a couple of rows and still go directly from after that short row shaping. I was a bit concerned that I might get confused about where each of the rounds had ended and finished given the short rows sort of complicated it a bit, so to speak. But I was still able to pick back and just go basically where from um, where you start the increases. So yeah, I'm very excited about wearing this once it's done, although I probably won't be able to wear it until May, <laughs> given we're going into summer here in Australia, but that's okay. I feel like every year in the past, I have only, well, I mean, I've only really been making garments for the last two years, but in the past, I would only start making winter garments at start of winter um, and then I would finish them at the end of winter and then I wouldn't be able to wear them until the following winter anyway so I figure I might as well make them in summer while I can be bothered and then I can wear them at the start of when the weather starts to cool down so yeah I'm quite excited about this one I've come to notice that I really adore cropped tops with my high-waisted skirts so um, I'm quite excited to start making some of those to add to my wardrobe. Oh, um, the lighting might go a little bit strange because the living room has, well, it probably has the same amount of window space. My room probably has more actually, but um, yeah, the way that these windows are facing versus the way that the windows in my room are facing, um, it'll be a bit more obvious when the sun moves around. But anyway, I think that's everything that I have to say about this one. Um, oh, one more thing. Um, I am also knitting this for two different knit alongs. So, Rachel, <laughs> I don't know why I forgot her name there. Um, Rachel, uh, who's the designer, is hosting a Cinna Cal. So, that's a Cinna knit along for any of her patterns from that collection. Um, and so, I thought that would be a perfect time to cast this on. And then, Selena from Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co who I only came to know a couple of months ago um, through her account being shared by some other dyers that I follow. Um, but Selena dyes really beautiful yarns and also is hosting the Size Inclusive Knit Along. Um, and so this is actually my third project for that, which is mad because normally I start something for a knit along and then I don't finish it. Like very rarely do I finish it, let alone be on my third project. Like I finished the other two and I'm on the third one. I, yeah, I, I genuinely don't know what got into me. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so that will be technically counting for both of those knit-alongs. And I'll link both of those um, people's accounts in the show notes so that if you want to see more guidelines about those knit-alongs, then you can do so in case you want to join one. The size inclusive one I think ends at the end of December and 
I want to say end of January for Rachel's knit along but don't quote me on that I might be wrong but I feel like there's still enough time that you could at least start a project um, potentially finishing it as well okay I've got two more things that I can show you or that I'm going to show you today one of them is a sock oh I nearly just pulled a whole heap of stitches off these teeny tiny needles so this is going to be well it already mostly is the Volker socks I hope I said that somewhat right. I'm pretty sure it's a German word, but um, yeah, I don't I don't speak German. Um, I speak a bit of Spanish, but that doesn't really help me in pronouncing German words. Um, but anyway, this is a pattern by Becky Sorensen, who is Soprano Knits, um, and just a really talented designer. I'll fold this part of the pattern down so I can show you this lovely photo. Um, but it's essentially a plain sock with contrasting heels, toes and cuffs and this awesome bubble pattern um, at the leg and then a little bit at the end of the foot. So it's done top down and this is how mine is working up. So it's got, um, oh, let's do it this way. So it's got a twisted cuff and then the like bowl pattern. I can't get over how cool this is. I, I really, really like it. <laughs> um, so yeah, the bubbles start bigger and then slowly get smaller. Um, and then there's a little bit of plain knitting. Oh, sorry. And then this fabulous short row heel, which is Becky's new depths heel. It's included for free in a lot of her sock patterns um, or you can purchase it separately. Um, and it's basically a heel pattern or heel method that she designed that's meant to be quite quick in that it doesn't have a heel flap and gusset which can take quite a while um so the short rows just make it a bit faster it's also easier to make it fit your foot better um so the way that it's designed it's meant to be really good for people with high arches and i have some of those so yeah um i haven't knit a whole lot of socks i think i've only knit about two pairs plus one that's somewhere and I probably won't ever finish until I need the needles from it. Anyway, um, so I don't, I can't really say that those other socks haven't fit me well, but I do know that I really struggle in finding shoes that fit my high arches, narrow feet and long feet. So um, while the length and the narrowness can be adjusted in terms of knitting a sock um, quite easily in just how many stitches you cast on and how long you make it, um, it did occur to me that actually, yeah, it might be good to find a heel pattern that's designed specifically for fitting your foot really well, given I've always struggled in finding shoes that fit well and need orthotics in shoes and yeah, anyway. Um, so yeah, I did the heel and then I've done this bit of plain knitting. Um, and then, oh, that's the blank side. <laughs> I've just started, you can just see them starting to form. Um, just started the bobbles for the foot. They're only done on the top of the foot, obviously, so you don't, you're not standing on the bobbles underneath, which is why I, that's like the blank side. And then that's where the bobbles are. I've got one of Hannah's markers on here, Hannah at the corner of craft. Um, so it's one of her little bumblebee markers. Um, yeah, I really love him. I've had him for so long though that I think the thread is starting to come loose after this many years because I've used it so many times. Um, they're incredibly durable for something made with glass beads, but I might just need to <laughs> run a bit of thread through because it's just it's been on a whole lot of projects this one these ones I bought this was one of the first ones I bought from her maybe in 2017 I think yeah I want to say I bought them that year and that was back when Hannah had an Etsy shop not her own website so yeah and she wasn't even dying yarn at that point anyway it's just, it's just mind-blowing so for this one I used a sock set which is why it matches so well um, and it's from Beehive Yarns and it's the Gilded and Desert Trail, I want to say, I think. 
sounds about right. I'll put it in the show notes. I don't remember what the two colors were called exactly, but I'm pretty sure that this is Desert Trail and then this is Gilded. Or it could be the other way around. I don't know. Anyway, it was a sock set, so I've got a big skein of <laughs> just falling apart um, of the main color, which is just, it's just stunning. I like to have these rich turquoises. I love this really, really dark brown. Um, because when it mixes with the blues, you get this like hand painted kind of look and then the fluoro yellow and orange here and there. Oh, stunning. Um, and then the yellow just picks out the yellow in the sock itself. So yeah, that's why I'm using. It was, oh, I don't even remember what base it's on. It was on her high twist base. I don't remember if it was Merino, it might just be normal superwash, like another kind of wool. But I do remember it being marketed as a high twist base. It was 80% some kind of wool and 20% nylon. So it's really good for robust projects like socks. So I'm quite excited about these. Um, I figure when you wear hand knit socks, you can only really see like this much of it. And so I'm really glad this one has all the fun bubbles at the top. Um, so you can see it sticking out of the shoe. Because otherwise, you've you've hand knit the socks and and no one will even notice. So, not that anyone's really even going to notice, but it's fine. It's fine. I do really want to knit some um, simple ankle socks in a plain couple of colours um, with a ruffle at the cuff, so I can wear them with tights and little heels in winter. I have a couple of vintage block heels that are super super comfortable but because they have an open foot can't really wear them when it's cold and I just thought that would look really cute to have socks with ruffles on the ankle and the heels anyway I need to finish these ones first so yeah that's my sock I'm making the medium which is a 64 stitch one I did go up a bit in needle size I didn't really check my gauge but it's fine. It'll be fine. So yeah, I know that Becky knits quite loosely. So I used 2.25 millimeter needles for the non-bobble parts and two millimeters for the bobble parts, given it asks you to use a slightly smaller needle for the bobbles. And I'm pretty sure Becky used a 1.75 and a two millimeter. I mean, I didn't really have one. I, I don't have 1.75 millimeter needles. So that sort of solved that problem for me. But yeah, I'm very excited about that. Again, I'm not really gonna wear them until it gets cold next year, but I figure I'm a reasonably slow sock knitter. So yeah, I felt like I should probably start making them now. The last thing that I have to show you are two little projects that I finished quite recently. And these are the Petite Jumper and Petite Hat by the Petite Knitter. Um, <laughs> a bit of an apple. Um, and they're basically teeny tiny hats and jumper. Well, yeah, that's sort of self-explanatory. We'll start with the hat. I made the hat first. Um, Oh, it's so cute. I can't get over how cute it is. Um, so it's, it's a tiny beanie with a pom-pom and it's knit out of, or it's meant to be knit out of DK or eight ply yarn, but I wanted to use some four ply scraps that I had. So I just held them double. Um, I do think that mine came out a bit bigger than hers. But, um, I think, yeah, so it's got, this one has little colour work on the body of it, which actually wasn't that fiddly, given it's so small. Um, I did have a feeling it was going to be one of those patterns where, you know, it's a really tiny thing and people market it as something that you just whip up, you know, in an hour. And then you end up sitting there for four hours trying to sew teeny tiny pieces of knitting onto other teeny tiny pieces of knitting. But I did <laughs> hope that it would be okay because I've done so much amigurumi crochet, um, like making toys. So um, my <laughs> patience in teeny tiny things is fairly okay. 
and it really did work up so quickly like this was one of those projects where it actually did work up really quickly <laughs> i don't really know what each of these yarns are they're just scraps there's the darker blue there's a pink which is also in the pom-pom and then there's a mid-toned blue as well i did take some cute photos of this and they're on my instagram so if you want to see it um close up then you can pop over there and then I endeavoured to make a tiny jump up because I saw Hannah of the Corner of Craft uh, making teeny tiny jumpers with her yarn advent calendar every day which with each of the mini skeins and I didn't get a yarn advent calendar this year because they're quite expensive and I just felt like I wanted other things at the time. I then felt like I didn't want to be left out in the making of tiny jumpers because yeah really cute um so this is the petite jumper i just i yeah it's it's a little bit oh <laughs> it's on the ground now it's a little bit misshapen in that it's so tiny so it's a little bit lumpy here and there um so I will give it a bit of a block, but it's really cute. So this has a bit of colour work as well. I will admit, this was a lot harder than the hat. So if you're just delving into the world of tiny knitted things, go for the hat. Don't, don't go for the jumper first. Um, the other thing was that the body is worked bottom up. You make the sleeves and then you join the sleeves and then you finish the body. However, I feel like I should have made the sleeves first because it meant that I made the body and then I had to cut my main colour to make the sleeves and then rejoin the main colour onto the body to join the sleeves afterwards. So there was just a lot of ends to weave in and that was quite difficult on something so small. So I think that's the only thing that I'd do differently is to make the sleeves first. And then it was quite fiddly to be doing colour work on the yoke, but it's overall extremely cute and a similar size to the hat. So obviously this hat is not designed to be worn by someone that would be wearing these jumpers because <laughs> it'd be a really, really large head. But yeah, they're the same size so that then you can hang them in a garland together and they'd be the same size. So that is what I'm planning to do. They're not really gonna be color coordinated. I'm just gonna use scraps in my stash for it. This one also was for um, Hell Double, the four ply Hell Double. I figured that my stash probably has enough of a colour theme that it will be fine. So yeah, um, I'm quite excited with these. I really didn't have any issues with the pattern except that thing about um, how it tells you to do the sleeves after starting the body because um, I just didn't have enough needles so i had to be switching my needles around to make sleeves on the right needles and then put them on other needles and then go back to the right needles and anyway so i think that's the only thing it was admittedly quite a bit later at night that i made this than this one i think maybe we'll do two beanies for every jumper rather than a one for one ratio because that would just take a really long time i wanted to make a little garland that i could hang somewhere i don't really know where but I think we do have a festive garland that I made my parents a few years ago and it had like crocheted, oh what was it, like sticky date puddings or something? I don't know. And Christmas trees with like little glass beads as lights, I don't know. <laughs> I think that was just a project where I was extremely bored. I was just bored out of my mind and I just needed to make an extremely fiddly and time-consuming bunting for my parents. So that's probably in a box somewhere. <laughs> I'm really excited with these two. Um, I think I'm going to make quite a bit more of the hats than the jumper though. So I think that's everything that I have to show you. Um, I have got one other project I've been working on but not as much in the recent weeks. So I think once I finish something, <laughs> probably the test knit, then I'll go back to that shawl and then I'll show you that in the next episode. So 
I'm uploading this 10, so that's the 10th today. And then say it goes up on 12th through the 13th because I have a procedure tomorrow, so I won't do anything with it tomorrow. 15 plus two weeks. Oh God, 15. Uh, oh no, I might just, yeah, it'll go over Christmas. So probably the next episode will be somewhere in between Christmas and New Year's or just after New Year's Day because we might go to, we as in like my dad and I might go to Melbourne for a day. I think he's going for two days um, because we've got his family there, but because Victoria was in much more restrictive restrictions, <laughs> harsher restrictions yeah that's, that's a better word um then we are in the ICT and some other states in Australia we wouldn't be able to go as a family like we normally do just in the yeah it's a bit dicey dicey in that if something happened and then they had to strictly lock down again then we'd kind of be a bit stuck so we wouldn't want to have the whole family have that possibility because my parents need to work my sister needs to work I need to work so yeah, but normally we would stay in Canberra with my mum's family that are in Australia to have Christmas Day and usually Christmas Eve as well. And then we'd go to Melbourne on Boxing Day. But last year we spent actual Christmas with um, my dad's family, given it was the first Christmas without my pa. And so we wanted to be with them on the actual day. So we did like an early Christmas with my mum's family and then went on Christmas Eve maybe to my nana and pa's house in Melbourne. It's funny how you still refer to something like that as Nana and Pa's house, even though well, I guess it is both, was both of their houses, even though one of them's only there now. But um, anyway, um, it would be nice to still try to see that family in Melbourne. You know, the first Christmas after someone passed away is hard, but all the other Christmases and birthdays and they're not a whole lot easier. <laughs> so it will be nice to hopefully see them. My uncle is actually in Canberra for a business thing, so I'll get to see him on Saturday, which is really nice. It'll be interesting to see what happens over the Christmas and New Year's period. I think we're gonna spend Christmas Day and Boxing Day with my mum's family just to hopefully make it a little less stressful, given sometimes we'd spend Christmas Eve with them at my grandma's house and we'd be there quite late in the evening. And because my parents would have drinks with the with our family you'd need to then wait long enough after drinking to then drive home and you just want to stay a long time with the family and and then we'd have to get up early the following morning to go to church and then go to my grandma's house um and then you'd be there for the whole day as well so it's yeah it's a bit of a tiring period of the year we're gonna do christmas and boxing day instead just to make it a little bit easier but I'm hopeful that I'll get to see our Melbourne family, um, even if it's just for a day. So because I won't see you potentially until the new year. I hope that you will have a enjoyable holiday period. I realise that the holidays are going to look quite, quite different for a lot of us. Really for everyone. Because even though things have eased so much where I live, you still have family in other locations. You still have friends in other locations. Um, like I follow lots of people who are hand dyers or designers and... In the places they're living it's completely different and for any of our american family or um family still in central america like it's just yeah it's it's gonna affect everyone a bit differently but i think things will just look a bit different this year and for the next couple of years as well so i hope that if you're not able to spend the holidays with your family that um watching podcasts and connecting with people online gives you some bit of i don't know sense of Festive, festiveness um, and makes you feel a bit less alone because I know that the main reason I started watching podcasts was because I'm quite introverted and so being able to watch someone talk about their projects and while I'm working on something and then comment back what I've been working on um, I got to connect with people that way but it wasn't like confronting social situations now even more so for people who are living alone or people who can't be with their family for Christmas or even if you don't celebrate Christmas, just in the period of the year when a lot of people get together with family. I hope that you will have a nice and enjoyable 
festive period over the next few weeks. If you enjoyed the podcast, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and click the notification bell. I'm hoping to get back to somewhat regular uploads over the next foreseeable future, assuming something else doesn't happen. Um, admittedly, I'm starting college in February, so we'll see. I also just realised that I went through this whole podcast with not actually mentioning that I got some very exciting news a couple of hours ago. I don't know when I'm going to share what that news was, but it is yarn related, so I might share it on my Instagram. So if you want to see me announce what that is in some way, I mean, I might not really announce it, but we'll see. <laughs> um, if you do want to see me talk about that thing that I'm really, really excited about, then do head over to my Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. I realise it's a bit of a rambly episode. It's been like 15 minutes. I hope that you found it somewhat enjoyable. And if you're new or if you're a returning viewer, and I feel like I haven't talked to anyone in my podcast in a really long time, make sure to leave a comment and just say hi. Let me know what you've been working on. I'd love to chat to you guys down there. So with all of that said, thank you again for watching and I'll see you in my next podcast.